Doctor Who, The End of Time, the two-part story that are 2009 Christmas special and 2010 New Year special and the fourth and the final of the 2008-2010 specials is written by Russell T. Davis and starring David Tennant, John Sim, Bernard Cribbins and Timothy Dalton. Oh boy. This is David Tennant's last regular story. So Russell T. Davis describes this story as huge and epic but also intimate and planned the story for some time in dedicating that it continues the trend of series finals being processively more dramatic. Apparently David Tennant and Julie Gardner cried reading the script. Originally part one was going to be called The End of Time and part two was going to be called The Final Days of Planet Earth, but they needed the same title and differentiate it by part numbers. Unless we're counting the Sarah Jane Adventures, it hasn't been like that since Survival and I think it works. So it begins with Rassilon narrating about the final days of planet Earth and Wilfred has done Christmas shopping and sees the face of John Sim laughing. So he goes to the church and sees a mysterious woman who reveals that the doctor is coming back. And I love the bit where the TARDIS is on the church window where Jesus is born. So after the title sequence in the Ute Sphere, the doctor walks out the TARDIS wearing a hat, shades and ring of flowers. First watching it I was like, what the heck is he wearing? <laughs> you wear that, Doctor. You wear that. So the Doctor meets with Ood Sigma and the Elder Ood, as they can see the Master's face. They also mention that Wilfred is suffering the same thing. Introduction to Joshua and Abigail Nay Smith and Lucy Saxon in the prison cell gave me the goosebumps when the Ood gets red eyes and mentions the end of time itself. So we get an epic Doctor's run to the TARDIS with the soundtrack that sounds a bit like the 11th Doctor's theme, The Madman with the Box, which is cool. While Lucy Saxon witnesses the new governor and her guards pouring potions and using Lucy's lipstick to send the Master back to life. So Lucy uses a potion to blow the whole place up, just before the Doctor arrived to see the building destroyed, and Joshua noticed on the footage that someone survived the explosion and tells his workers that Christmas is cancelled. I like the bit where Wilfred does a bit of a wiggle as the bus pulls over. I was expecting the driver to be like, what are you doing, grow up? But no, along with the customers, he applauds. So Wilfred tells the old people what the doctor looks like and they needed his help. Meanwhile, two men, one of them called Ginger, gets themselves burgers from Burger Van and the master in his hood asked for everything as he's so hungry and laughed, which is a great entrance. So he landed where the two blokes are eating the burger really fast. I think the reaction should be like... Hey, 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 take it easy. You'll get a stomachache if you swallow it like that. Exactly, but his resurrection went wrong and his body is ripped open. It's so scary. Especially in the next time trailer where his blue skull faded in and out like something he'd seen in a horror movie. So it scared the two men off. At the moment they realised that two women working in burger van are skeleton. The master shouted dinner time and devoured them. We get an epic chase scene with the doctor and the master in the wasteland. And the master flew off and Wilfred arrives with the old people. As Minnie calls the team Silver Cloak. And we get a nice and funny moment where they take pictures of themselves with the Doctor. And Minnie grabbing him <laughs> somewhere. So the Doctor and Wilfred arrived in the cafe having a conversation wondering how they kept meeting each other. And the Doctor says he's going to die and got told by Carmen about the prophecy that he will knock four times. And Donna happens to be outside and she's engaged with Sean Temple. Sadly, the Doctor wouldn't see her and he felt really sad with his actions, which is emotional. So after he walks out the cafe, we have Rassilon narrating the Master sitting in the wasteland eating a bone. The Doctor stands around at the wasteland while Joshua and his daughter Abigail drinks glass of champagne. While the staff are preparing the Immortality Gate, I love the face reveal of Timothy Dalton as Rassilon. The scene where the master tried to electrocute the doctor with the lightning from his hands like Palpatine is pretty intense. And at that moment where he's electrocuted the doctor, I was like, no! Because I actually thought that's what caused the 10th doctor to regenerate, but it wasn't, it stung him for a bit. So the master and the doctor have a little talk. The doctor points out what's wrong with the master resurrection, and he also told him that something is returning. As the Doctor hears the drum noise in the Master's head, he's thinking that it's his own insanity. 
The master laughs it's real and flies off. So the doctor chases him again and the master calls himself king of a wasteland, which makes the doctor a dirty rascal. So Naismith captured the master and knocks the doctor out. So on Christmas Day, Wilfred gets a book of Fighting the Future by Joshua Naismith. I'm wondering why he got this book, and Donna felt it's something that Wilfred should have, which is instinct. While Sylvia and Donna are laughing at a dirty Christmas card with a guy shirtless wearing Santa jacket and hat, Sean Temple arrives giving the presents and Wilfred tries to watch the Queen's speech, but the same woman appears saying that the Doctor can be saved if Wilfred tells him nothing, and we learn that during the war, Wilfred never killed a man. So he goes to his room and he gets a revolver, and seeing the doctor outside and the doctor asks Wilfred if he's seen anything so he showed the doctor the book of Joshua A. Smith and we get an entertained scene where the doctor and Wilfred left and Sylvia followed them and Donna's like a bit old for hide and seek. The doctor didn't want Wilfred to come with him but noticing Sylvia's anger the doctor's like fair enough. So the doctor and Wilfred went in the TARDIS and disappeared off. While Sylvia is shouting and Donna's like, are you shouting at thin air? Brilliant. And there's Wilfred hoping the TARDIS would be cleaner. As the master is wheeled as he's strapped into the trolley, wearing a strapped jumper with a dog lead, we learn that Gate heals people's injuries and make them better. Joshua Naismith acquired it after the fall of Torchwood. He's also a billionaire and responsible for a phone company advertised on the side of the 200, a bus from Plant of the Dead. And his daughter Abigail heard rumours of Harold Saxon, his disciples, his return. Her father said that she enjoyed such things and Joshua understandably wanted Abigail never to die. David Harewood and Tracy Efecho did a great job playing those characters. So after Mr. Danes gave the master the cooked chicken and eating it really fast, the TARDIS arrives outside, the master started typing in. Wilfred and the Doctor met Adams and Rossiter who are the Venvoci people. They're cactus people and they do look like Zocchi except taller and green, talking about Banagafalata. I think Laurie Lewin and Sinead Keenan did a fantastic job as well. So the master repairs the gate with a fantastic soundtrack and the moment of the doctor finds out that the gate is mending the whole planet, he runs into the room with the gate and tells Naismith not to let the master go anywhere near it. So the master blasts his strap jumper and dog lead off and flew himself into the gate. And every human in the world except Donna can see the master's face. So the doctor managed to cure Wilfred in a nuclear booth. And Donna, who has a metachrist as she's part Time Lord, part human, doesn't get infected but Sylvie and Sean does. And it also happens to President Obama. So then the master blasts the earth and everyone except the doctor, Wilfred, Donna and both Invochis shake their heads and became the master race. I was like, what? When I first watched it, I thought this was crazy. I love the bit where Trinity Wells master is like, breaking news, I'm everyone and everyone in the world is me. I found it really funny seeing John Sim wearing clothes that's too big or small for him and seeing him wearing a dress. <laughs> Apparently they couldn't even tell us how many times John Sim changes his clothes. While Donna is having flashbacks of aliens that she's met in the past, the master tells the doctor that there's no human races, there's only the master race. So the whole master race laughs. John Sim does a fantastic laugh and it also reveals that the Time Lords have returned, with Rassilon spitting and saying, for the end of time itself. I think Timothy Dalton is so good in this. Him as Rassilon gave me the shivers. And apparently Rassilon was resurrected from the Matrix by Project Revenant during the last Great Time War. So in part 2, 2010 New Year special, we see damaged Gallifrey with a lot of Dalek sources all over the place and the Time Lords having a meeting. Joe Dixon is brilliant as the Chancellor and so are Julie Legrand and Britt Brennan as the Partisan and Visionary. The casting of Time Lords including David Tennant and John Sim as the Doctor and the Master is perfect. They represent the characters well and shows to those who hasn't seen classic series who those characters are. After Rassilon disintegrate Partisan with his gauntlet like Thanos, Chancellor updates Lord President Rassilon with the Doctor and the Master survives, Visionary does a tune with her fingernails on the table and the drumming tune is obviously Time Lord's heartbeat, as they have two hearts and double two is four. Meanwhile the Doctor and Wilfred are tied up, we know even the units 
are the master race as well. So Donna phones Wilfred about everyone has changed and told her to run. While the master orders the master race to trace the call and there's a few master race walking towards Donna. So then she gets a flashback of aliens that she's met and the doctor so then the regeneration attacks the master race is unconscious and Donna passed out. So the master finally unstrapped the doctor's mouth and asked the doctor where the TARDIS is. The doctor said to him that he doesn't need to own the universe, just see it, which is nice. And also the master is still dying, so he asks the doctor the TARDIS, otherwise Wilfred dies. But he didn't notice a guard that's one inch taller than him until a couple of seconds before he got knocked out by a guard with a gun. And it was Rossiter. So they untied Wilfred and wheeled the doctor out. And we get a great line, worst rescue ever. As they reached to the basement, the master caught up with them. So Adams teleported herself with Rossiter, the Doctor and Wilfred to her spaceship. So the Doctor deactivates the heating and the Master has no trace of the spaceship. Adams obviously wasn't happy because the Doctor wrecked the ship. After the Master and his race hears the drum sound, Lord President Rassilon takes a diamond out of his staff and threw it in the earth so the Master race picked it up and it was White Point Star that was only found on Gallifrey. With a brilliant variation of Sun's Gone Wibbly soundtrack, Sir Wilfred wanders around inside a spaceship and speaks to that woman saying it's the Doctor's final battle. So while the Doctor is fixing the heat in, Wilfred sits with him and wonders that if the Master has changed the graves and the Doctor reveals to Wilf that he's 906. So then Wilfred begs the Doctor to take the gun but he refuses which made Wilfred cry. So the Master's voice from the radio reaches the ship, revealed to him that he's got the White Point Star, and the Doctor finds out that the Time Lords have returned. So the Doctor snatches a gun off Wilfred and runs off. So the Master prepares the link for the Time Lords, and we get a badass scene where Rassilon is like, Gallifrey rises! So the Doctor prepares the spaceship, saying Z for one last time, and we get an awesome battle scene with the spaceship shooting at a lot of missiles we get Star Wars vibes into it. As the ship arrives at Nave Smith's mansion, the Doctor jumps out of it and lands through the glass roof and hit the floor with cuts on his face and his jacket, which looked painful. I actually thought that was the reason the 10th Doctor's regeneration as he looked unwell. He realises he was too late as the Time Lords are already there. Lord President Rassilon turned everyone back into themselves and Gallifrey appears near the Earth, as it reveals that it is returning prophecy, is Gallifrey. As everyone panics and runs away, Vin Bocci got away, as Adam said the Doctor says he's already dying. Wilfred freed a scientist from a nuclear booth and trapped himself. The Doctor reveals anything that's time-locked in final days of war that's coming through. So after the Doctor pointed a gun at Rassilon and the Master, he sees a woman, there was rumours that she could be the Doctor's mum, but Stephen Moffat lets us decide who she is. Could be the Doctor's mother, or Romana, Susan, the Doctor's daughter, who knows. So then the Doctor shot the link, and the Time Lords got sent away back to Gallifrey, and the Master joins them as he saved the Doctor. So the Time Lords are back in the last great time war, with the Master with Gallifrey disappearing, and the Doctor is still there, and he has four knocks, which turns out to be Wilfred knocking on the glass case. So he made his depressing speech with anger. So much more! So much more! But this is what I get. My reward. But it's not that! He then lets Wilfred out, but as the doctor trapped himself, he gets poisoned by radiation, which is so sad and horrible to sit through. After the moment the radiation stops, the doctor woke up and got out the vault, and using his hands to heal the scars like Wolverine. And he says it started as his body's preparing to regenerate. So Donna took a nap on the couch, asking if she's missed something again. The doctor took Wilfred back home, and Sylvia is surprisingly happy to see the doctor and Wilfred again. The doctor says that he's getting his reward. So he saves Martha and Mickey from a Suntoran. Apparently, Martha Jones and Mickey Smith are married. Even Freema Agyeman was confused about it because Martha was supposed to be engaged with Tom Milligan. While Luke Smith is phoning Clyde Langer, the Doctor pushed Luke out of the way from the car and waved at Sarah Jane Smith. Then he visited to an alien bar to see Captain Jack Harkness who's there after the events of Children of Earth and Jack flirts with Alonso Frame. And yet Jack felt guilty of the death of his grandson, Stephen, 
and Alonso felt guilty of the death of passengers on replica of the Titanic, which is really sad obviously. So the doctor goes to the library to see Joan Redfern's great granddaughter, Verity Newman, played by the same actress who played Joan, Jessica Hines, named after Verity Lambert and Sidney Newman. She signs the book of A Journal of Impossible Things. So the doctor arrives at Donna and Sean's wedding, so Wilfred and Sylvia met up with the doctor and gave them something from Jeff Noble. So they gave it to Donna, which turns out to be lottery ticket to solve all of Donna's financial problems. This is so emotional, the way Wilfred salutes and cries as the doctor leaves. So in Powerless State on New Year's Day 2005, Jackie and Rose head some. As Jackie left, Rose talks to the doctor who's hiding in the shadows. Rose tells him it's 2005, January the 1st, and the doctor tells her that she's going to have a great year. Well, it'll be a short year for her because we know what happens. So Rose smiles and leaves. Man, this is so sad, as it's the last time we see all these companions and recurring characters, apart from Sarah Jane, Luke and Captain Jack. In Rose, as of time of recording, apparently Elton and Ursula were going to reappear for farewell scene, but it got dropped for some reason, which is a shame. So the Doctor is in pain and walks slowly to the TARDIS as the Ute Sigma tells him his song is ending, but the story never ends, while the song of Valediction is playing which is Latin for Farewell 10, which is upsetting. So the Doctor has made it to the TARDIS. He takes his long brown coat off and hoys it at a coral structures and looked at his hand with regenerative energy and the TARDIS disappears. And his final word is, I don't want to go. So he then regenerates, which destroyed the inside of the TARDIS and turns into the 11th Doctor, played by Matt Smith. It's so sad to see my favorite Doctor leaving and I did cry when I watched it, seeing David Tennant leaving, and the TARDIS bursting up in flames, I did guess that the interior is going to change. So the 11th Doctor checks all his body parts, the TARDIS is about to crash, so the Doctor spits at the console, grabs hold and shouts Geranimo, and there we have it! Oh, I can't tell how emotional that is, plus I do miss Russell T Davis' style of Doctor Who as I grew up with that era, at least he's coming back. Sadly, a lot of people didn't like this story. I do. I thought it was uh, fantastic and really emotional. What do you guys think of The End of Time Part 1 and 2? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And next Doctor Who series to talk about is Series 5 with Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. <laughs>